40,000 years ago, dawn broke over the prehistoric forest of Northern Europe as a small band of Cro-Magnon modern humans crouched silently on a ridge overlooking the Neanderthal camp. Armed with finely crafted bows and arrows, the Cro-Magnons awaited the perfect moment to strike. The leader of these modern humans signaled to the archers, and the first volley of arrows whistled through the air, descending upon the Neanderthal camp below. Neanderthals, armed with thrusting spears, struggled to comprehend the sudden onslaught. The Neanderthals, though physically robust, found themselves outmatched in terms of weaponry and strategy. The remaining Neanderthals fought fiercely, but the tide had turned decisively against them, and their extinction was near. In the aftermath, Neanderthal women and children were spared, becoming reluctant witnesses to the clash of two distinct human species. The encounter between Neanderthals and modern humans served as a stark reminder of the relentless march of evolution and the inevitable clash of different human species. The echoes of the Neanderthals' existence still resonate across the epochs, waiting to be uncovered by those who venture into the depths of time. It haunts everyone's imaginations, including those of researchers who are capable of imaginative thought. Yet in recent years, in the wake of archaeological discoveries, the Neanderthal has been portrayed wearing shell necklaces and eagle claws, playing the flute, painting cave walls, inventing technology as an armed warrior and as the king of the north. In his recent book, The Naked Neanderthal, Ludovic Slimak, paleoanthropologist at the University of Toulouse in France, wrote that the Neanderthal can't be equated with anything known to us. They are not our brothers or cousins. Extinction may occur when two populations are in conflict, when there's a total war between populations, and one group is going to seek to destroy another group. And in that scenario, you regard the other group as no longer human. You will slaughter everyone and capture the children and women, according to Slimak. Archaeologists typically find that if sapiens enter Neanderthal territory, the Neanderthals are extinct. If both species came into contact over such a long period of time, which is far more significant than what happened to Neanderthals, we should be wondering what these two species did together. Did they communicate? And more importantly, how did they interact? The question of their relationship is fascinating because looking at the DNA of any early sapiens in Europe reveals that they all have Neanderthal DNA. But if we focus on the last Neanderthals, we can see that not a single Neanderthal has recent Homo sapiens DNA. What happened? Why do all sapiens in Europe have Neanderthal DNA, but no Neanderthals have sapiens DNA? When two populations are close together but very different, possibly because they speak different languages and have different traditions, or because they live in neighboring territories, they will exchange women. But you can't trade a woman for a spear or some animal skins, so this is evidence of total war. Neanderthals were very similar to us. Our skull and skeletal anatomy are remarkably similar, and 99.7% of our DNA is the same. Neanderthals behaved remarkably similarly to humans. They built fires, buried their dead, fashioned jewellery out of seashells and animal teeth, and created cave art and stone shrines. If Neanderthals shared many of our creative instincts, they most likely shared many of our destructive instincts as well. Their massive muscular builds must have made them formidable fighters in close quarters combat. Neanderthals' large eyes most likely provided superior low-light vision, allowing them to manoeuvre in the dark for ambushes and dawn raids. Indeed, Neanderthals may have been doomed by their vision-centred brains. According to new research, Neanderthals' keen vision may explain why they died out, despite having brains the same size as modern humans. Neanderthals evolved massive visual regions in their brains to compensate for Europe's low light levels. However, this reduced the amount of brain space available for other aspects of intelligence. The relationship between absolute brain size and higher cognitive abilities has long been debated, and this new study may explain why Neanderthal culture appears less developed than that of early modern humans, particularly in terms of symbolism, ornamentation and art. The intelligence of Neanderthals has long been debated. They had massive brains, so they must have been as intelligent as we are. Neanderthals used their oversized eyes to survive in lower light environments in Europe, where the northern latitude means fewer sun rays reach the earth. 
The researchers hypothesized that Neanderthals must have had extensive brain regions dedicated to visual processing. In fact, Neanderthal skulls suggest that the extinct hominids had elongated regions in the back of their brains, known as the occipital region, which houses the visual cortex. Although Neanderthal brains were similar in size to their modern human counterparts, a new analysis of fossil data suggests that their brain structure was distinct. Overall, differences in brain structure and cognition may help explain why Neanderthals became extinct while modern humans survived. The researchers determined the standard size of fossil brains based on body mass and visual processing requirements. After accounting for differences in body and visual system size, the researchers were able to compare how much of the brain was available for other cognitive functions. The findings suggest that the Neanderthal brain had more areas dedicated to vision and movement than the modern human brain, leaving less room for higher-level thinking. Human minds have certain universal characteristics that stem from common features of the Homo sapiens brain and cause people all over the world to think in similar ways, regardless of society or cultural background. Neanderthals saw the world differently than Homo sapiens. Neanderthals were far more creative than Homo sapiens. Since the late 1800s, we've known that other types of humans once lived on our planet. At the time, scientists recognized that fossils discovered in caves throughout Europe belonged to archaic humans known as Neanderthals. Over time, our understanding of Neanderthals has changed dramatically. There's something innate in Homo sapiens' behavior, in our behavior, to act and think in certain ways. In fact, it is in our nature. But Neanderthal crafts do not follow this pattern of standardization. Look closely at Neanderthal tools and weapons. They are all unique. Study thousands, and you will discover that each is unique. There was a significant difference in the way Homo sapiens and Neanderthals perceived the world. Sapiens' tools may be more efficient, but Neanderthals are more unique. If you take crafts from Homo sapiens, such as 100 tools or 100 flints from 50,000 to 100,000 years ago, the 10,000 tools or flints that follow will be identical. The population has a very specific project in mind, and they reproduce it regardless of the natural geology, environment, or climate. Sapiens are efficient, collective. We think similarly and dislike divergence. Efficiency, normativity, and uniformity are major characteristics that define Homo sapiens. Go to any hunter-gather society. There are clear rules and customs as well as shared clothing styles. Expectation to act in a specific way, to follow regulations. Our forefathers lived this way instinctively, but you don't see that with Neanderthals. Neanderthals had different experiences and ways of being in the world than our ancestors, not just by culture, but by their very nature. Researchers have speculated that Neanderthal behavior would appear neophobic, dogmatic, and xenophobic to modern humans, despite having a high degree of rationality. However, if you compare a Neanderthal tool to a million others in the same layer and societies, they are all vastly different. Each tool is a distinct creation. Neanderthals exhibit incredible creativity. There is also a complete lack of standardization, which we see in both our ancestors and modern societies. The quality of stone tools discovered at archaeological sites indicates that Neanderthals were skilled at expert cognition, a type of observational learning and practice acquired through apprenticeship that relies heavily on long-term procedural memory. Over hundreds of thousands of years, Neanderthal toolmaking remained remarkably consistent. A lack of innovation may indicate a reduced ability to think by analogy and less working memory. And with that tantalizing statement, we leave you to ponder the mysteries of our human history. Until next time, stay curious and stay questioning. Please subscribe, share, and explore our channel's other highly compelling videos.